My Sterling Single, Changing the Shape of the Chimney. Here's my Sterling Single running on the bench on compressed air. And as you can see, it's running very well, but this chimney is driving me mad. Here's an original casting for the chimney, which is sat on the general arrangement drawing for the shape of the chimney. This is part of a photograph of a Stirling single, and this is how I want my chimney to look. I really don't want the chimney to look like this because it looks like a toy train. The full size is much better. So I'm going to reprofile the chimney, starting off with making a mandrel. I need to turn down this piece of steel so that the chimney slides onto it. I've used this piece of steel as a mandrel for something or other before. Now it's time to make it into a mandrel for the chimney. And I'm doing this just by feel as usual. Turn a bit off, try the chimney in place. No, it's still too big. Turn a little bit more off, try the chimney in place again, etc, etc. I don't want this mandrel to be too tight to fit in the chimney because I'm going to use some Loctite, or in my case, Loctite equivalent. This Loctite equivalent is called Bond Lock, and it really is very similar to Loctite. The only thing is, I don't think it sets quite as quickly, although I may be wrong about that. The lathe has been running at four times normal speed, so now I've changed it to eight times normal speed, just to get through this part of the procedure. And finally, it's the right size. I'm using some emery cloth to remove the sharp edges. And the chimney is a perfect fit on this mandrel. It's not tight and it's not slack. This is the Bond Lock Loctite substitute that I mentioned. And I'm going to apply some of this to the mandrel and then spin the chimney on the mandrel to spread the adhesive. And by the time I've made a cup of tea and sat and drunk the tea, it's ready to use. The chimney's in position on the mandrel. I don't need to support the outer end because I'm not going to put much pressure on it, but I do need to put a correct lathe tool into the tool post. This is a brand new round nose tool. If you're doing a job like this, a word of warning, be careful where you commence the cut, because don't forget the bottom of these chimneys are very irregular to fit the smoke box. And if you take the cut too close to the bottom of the chimney, the job will be ruined immediately. This chimney is made from gun metal, which is a very soft metal, so it's a good idea to start off with a very sharp lathe tool to cut it. That's why I put a new one in the tool post. I printed out the photograph that I use for my desktop wallpaper on the studio computer, and it's currently behind the lathe, and I'm keeping one eye on that and one eye on what I'm doing. This part of the job is much more of an art than a science. In this part of the clip, I'm using a half round file because the bottom part of this chimney is a very specific shape. All I've been doing with the lathe tool is machining away the ridge, but there's still a bit of it showing, as you can see clearly here. Jobs like this can be a bit nerve-wracking. If I cut too far down the chimney, I will damage the bottom part, and that will be very difficult to get right again. If I take too much metal away, then it's not going to look right either, although I could repair this. I would have to use some silver solder and the corresponding flux, and build up the metal and then remachine it, but I'm trying not to do that. Here's a quick tip, or it should be really another word of warning. If you do a job like this and remove too much metal, do not use soft solder. It will be fine, it will fill the metal, until you steam the engine, then the soft solder will melt and run down the chimney. Because this is a coal-fired steam engine, and rather a lot of heat goes up this chimney, more than enough to melt soft solder. The best way to do this job is very, very slowly. And as you can see, at each pass I'm taking a very small amount of metal away from the chimney. This is definitely the most difficult part. It's the shape at this part of the chimney that makes it look right. Every time I do a bit more machining and a bit more sanding, it's starting to look much more like the photograph. Here's the photograph for reference. But I haven't got there yet. The part I'm having difficulty with is the bottom part of the chimney, where it goes from being a tapered chimney down to the fancy shape that fits on the smoke box. This next part of the job involves using some 100 grit emery cloth. I'm doing it completely by hand, as you can see the lathe isn't revolving. I removed the mandrel complete with the chimney from the lathe and went over to the polishing spindle to polish it up, and this showed me where I needed to go from here. It's time to call in the help of my Proxon rotary tool, fitted with the tool of my choice, which is an 80 grit flapper wheel. I'm going to use this to make the concave part. There's definitely a slim, sexy bit at this point. 
I'm determined to make this chimney look like the one in the photograph. I'm being fairly gentle and not taking too deep a cut with the flapper wheel, but it's doing the trick. It's a junction between the specially shaped bottom part of the chimney and the tapered part of the chimney that needs attention. And now, as you can see, it's starting to look like the real thing. Now I'm working down the grades of emery cloth, followed by wet or dry sandpaper, until I get the finish where I need it to be. A quick squirt with a bit of WD-40 makes it easier for the wet or dry sandpaper to cut. This is 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper, and I don't want too smooth a finish on the chimney, because at the end of it all, it's going to be painted. You may be wondering what I'm doing at the moment. I'm machining a piece of nylon. I'm going to use this to cushion the chimney while I tap out the mandrel. Don't forget, as I've mentioned earlier, gunmetal is a very soft metal and it's easily marked. So this is the best way to tap the mandrel out of the chimney. Like this, in fact. At this stage, I would like to mention that before doing this, I heated the chimney to break the bond between the bond lock and the metal. And at the moment, the chimney is too hot to touch, but it's not too hot that it's melting the nylon. To destroy the bond of these kind of adhesives like Loctite or bond lock, you need to heat the part, but not to red. It's not like silver soldering. You can see the principle here. The mandrel's coming out of the chimney. And once it was removed entirely, I used the flapper wheel in the Proxon motor tool once again to clean up the inside of the chimney to remove the residue. And once I fitted the chimney back to the engine, as you can see, it's really nice. What a sexy shape that is. In the past, I've had worse looking girlfriends than this chimney. This one is beautiful, just like the one on the photograph. So beautiful, in fact, I will fondle it some more. It's slim, it's slender, and it feels really good. No lumps or bumps in the wrong place. For the last part of the video, I'll just leave the engine running on compressed air. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.